what's up you guys my name is Tess hello and welcome back to my channel if you are new welcome I'm so happy to have you here so today's video is going to be about creating a meaningful community online so whether it is a YouTube channel you've been thinking about starting a podcast an Instagram I want to tell you you can do it you should and all businesses I think should be using at least one outlet to really tell a story, bring value to their clients, and in turn, see the positive effects on their bottom line. So we will dive into that. Um, but what inspired this whole video idea was a couple announcements I have about the whole content conversation. So I will just share in those. The first is that we've reached 3000 here on YouTube and more than the number, what I'm so excited is to just see the meaningful relationships um, develop at a bigger scale. So I couldn't have done it without you guys. I just started sharing my journey in school, vlogging little pieces with my iPhone and something about that was powerful enough. And I think it was just the fact that I was being myself and telling people that they could be successful being themselves as well. So I'm so excited just to see where this whole YouTube journey takes us and to con continue to bring you guys valuable content that motivates you and educates you. Um, so that is announcement number one, and I will be choosing a winner for a giveaway. I wanna give something back to you guys for following along in my journey. So I'm going to be giving away some swag from the Northern California Face and Body Show. If you couldn't attend, I want to choose somebody to receive those little goodies. All you have to do to enter the contest is subscribe to my Instagram, subscribe, follow my Instagram page, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I want you to comment a goal for yourself, for your life, your career down below. I love hearing these and just seeing where you guys are at and what are what you are aspiring towards helps me think of how I can bring you the most value. So that is announcement number one. Announcement number two is that I am launching a podcast with my good, good friend, Lauren, her Instagram, I'll put it right here, Lauren's Aesthetics. Lauren is the one of the estheticians that inspired me to become one. So I owe a lot to her and we are so excited to just share and inform and give you guys content you can consume a little bit more readily. I think social media is really heading in the direction of voice just because it's so accessible. People are busy. They are driving to work, to school. So if you guys can learn something on your way to school, I want to give you that opportunity. So that is the second announcement. Um, and I always want to think of new ways I can bring you guys value and elevate myself. Um, so that will be happening soon. The podcast is under review by Apple. So I will let you guys know when it is officially live. I'll announce it on my Instagram and I will put the link in my bio. So it means so much if you guys gave that a listen when it comes out. Um, those are my announcements. So let's just get into the video. Okay, so let's get into the meat of this video. And what I'm talking about right now is creating a meaningful community online, starting your own page, possibly for your brand or for yourself, you are a brand, um, whether you want to start a vlog, a Twitter page, just make the most of your LinkedIn, your Instagram, a podcast, I think it's an amazing tool to have social media. I think it is what separates traditional estheticians from the generations that are getting into it now. I think personally you would be a fool not to make the most of these opportunities, but I realize this video isn't going to be for everyone um, and that's okay. Maybe you listen and don't do anything about it. Maybe you just keep it in your mind. Maybe you take action. It's totally your call. I just want to give you guys the information. Um, so I'm talking about creating meaningful relationships and creating a community where you look at everyone as almost mini influencers in their own right. This is a community where we are meant to inspire each other, where we have the opportunity to look at li literally everyone's businesses and their pages um, and see them online. And so hopefully in creating this community, I want to change the mindset of looking at another business as your competition and rather seeing, looking at their business and seeing what you may like, what may inspire you to 
change your equipment or technology or the products you're using um, or maybe decide that wouldn't work for me. So that is where I really see major value in creating some kind of social media presence online. I don't really think it's an option anymore to survive as a business if that is your goal to start your own business. I don't think you can do it successfully without having some sort of online presence and I think it works best when it when it is a brand no matter how big whether it is um, Nike or just a small spa in the Midwest I think at the end of the day if you can tell meaningful stories I think you have influence so the first point I want to make is that I think your differences as a business are your greatest strength so myself, I could have thought to myself, there's a million, not a million, but there are a lot of other estheticians online. I'm not going to be the best. I'm not going to be the first. So why should I even try? And that thought comes into my mind all the time as I venture out into new platforms, whether it's YouTube or a podcast. Sometimes I think like, who am I to start creating content when other people have done it before? And then I think about what makes me me and why somebody might come to my page versus someone else or probably maybe both, but they might connect to me for different reasons. And that's probably the fact that I'm not a seasoned esthetician. I'm not the best one out there. I don't know the most at all. I'm really pretty fresh out of school, but I'm super eager to learn. And what separates me is that I've had six years of experience in a completely different field. So I'm not your Casey and Lorena from Beauty Biz BFFs that are just coming out of school, um, high school, going into the field. I'm not Renee Rouleau who knew she wanted to be an esthetician since she saw her grandmother having a hair salon when she was younger. I'm not Narita Joy who has decades of experience and um, experience working abroad as an esthetician. I'm really quite new to this, but I know effects of powerful marketing. I know how you can tell a story properly and use it to inspire others. I would say the most meaningful thing I learned in working for other brands is that the more personal and different you can be, the stronger your voice and your brand. The biggest brands you can think of all have something that make them different from somebody else. So for example, when I was working at E, the, the biggest way you could really mess up when trying to tell a story online through social media, um, and I'm kind of all over the place, but I used to work as a social media editor for E! News, and the biggest way you could kind of flop was to disseminate a piece of news without using your voice um, and telling it from that unique perspective that is so E. So for E, the voice is very witty. It's a little bit young, um, quirky, on the pulse of pop culture and social media. And so if you were to disseminate the news like you were the New York Times, it just wouldn't make sense for the brand. So you have to think about how you can tell the story um, from your unique perspective. And how you do that is just by being yourself. Um, and I think that's what has worked for me. So I could have compared myself to seasoned estheticians and thought I don't have a voice because I'm not as experienced. But instead, what I choose to do is tap into what I do know, which is how to create content that reaches people and tells a meaningful story. What you want to do is find the platform that works for you, whether it be Twitter or Facebook, um, a podcast. So that depends on if you're comfortable in front of a camera. YouTube could be awesome for you. For me, I wasn't actually really super comfortable, but I just put myself out there and I just recorded myself being myself and um, it happened to work it happened to work out. I like to do blog posts on Instagram because I think I am a strong writer, so maybe that's you. You could start a written blog. You could use Twitter if you're more comfortable writing in short um, 
little bites. You could use a podcast if you love to talk and you can find maybe a co-host where you have a great rapport. It's really just about finding what works for you because if you love it and look forward to doing it, you're just going to thrive. I think it's all about the long term, but I think in doing what you love, you naturally succeed. The third point I want to make is engaging personally with your followers or subscribers. I got a message once that was someone basically saying they had watched me from the beginning when I had no one really watching to where I am now, not to toot my own horn, not to say I have a huge massive following. I don't, but I think what she saw is that people are really engaged with me and they do see that I have somehow inspired others to chase their passion. And I've done that by just telling them to literally be themselves. Um, and I've been myself the whole time. So in engaging personally, I look at every message, every comment, as if it were a friend asking me for advice. I always get back to everyone who leaves a comment or a message. That's really important when you are starting a channel organically from the bottom especially those few people who are watching in the beginning when you don't have a big following, you make them like your little queens. Like <laughs> you have to really appreciate that they're taking the time to acknowledge your content when there's so much more out there and you're kind of a beginner. You have to really engage with them. Um, and that's why the people who have been watching my channel from the beginning, now it's like crazy to me that we haven't met because of the way we talk so frequently, the things we've shared with each other, the vulnerabilities that we've shared as well. Like I consider them true friends. So I've looked at every comment as an opportunity to start a conversation and hopefully develop a relationship. It's not about the numbers. It is about that authentic engagement. Bringing value. This is something the Skinny Confidential and Gary Vaynerchuk talk about incessantly. Bringing value. So that just basically means you are creating content um, out of selfless reasons rather than selfish reasons. So you are there to either educate, maybe you're there to inspire, maybe you're there to entertain. You can decide what your purpose is, but you need to have a strong purpose and you need to think of each piece of content you put out and think of your followers before you think of yourself. I make this mistake all the time when I'm creating content that is enjoyable for me. And sometimes it just sits there and it doesn't get a ton of views, but it was fun for me to make. And I take that hit because I do this because I really love it. Um, I'm thinking of, so for example, in the beginning, I when I started out on YouTube, I was doing makeup videos. Super saturated market. I wasn't amazing at makeup. I didn't really have um, anything unique about what I was doing. I think the worst, quote unquote, worst video I have to date, meaning the least amount of views, also brought very little value, was a Thanksgiving get ready with me where I just got ready for Thanksgiving and did my makeup, used some fall colors, and I, um, that was that. The reason it was just kind of a fail was it wasn't bringing anything unique to YouTube that somebody couldn't otherwise consume, and the people who watched it probably just watched it because I asked them to out of the goodness of their own heart. So I think the content that you create with others in mind is really going to be the best content. Just having patience and looking at the long-term vision. I see people on YouTube, quote unquote, mess up. It's not mess up, but what they do is accept a lot of sponsorships, small sponsorships, um, when they're just starting to get offers. And I think it does kind of take away from their subscribers' trust. Nothing against, against sponsorships. I think it's great when YouTubers can um, harness sponsorships and make a little money for their time because it's a lot of time and effort. But when they are going after ones that don't necessarily apply to who they are as a channel, don't really have much connection, I think it kind of starts to chip away at your subscribers' trust. So I think it's better to look to the long term um, and think about the brand you are creating 
rather than um, engage in a lot of little small sponsorships or to give up entirely, that would be the ultimate L, just kind of walking away and thinking, my channel's not going anywhere, I should just give up. It takes a lot of patience, especially YouTube. Um, it takes consistency and it takes you putting in the hard work when literally nobody is watching. So that's why I recommend doing it only if it's fun for you and if you would do it for free. Um, otherwise, you probably won't see a large following for a while. It happens for some people, they get lucky, but in general, you have to think of the long-term game. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is documenting the journey. And I think this is super powerful because what it taps into is storytelling. And I think it's really incredible for people to see how a brand evolves over time and see how you've grown over time. So for example, I know a spa owner who started sharing her whole journey of how she basically built this spa, designed it, all the little elements from the tiles to the cabinets to the final finishing touches, buying towels and small things like candles at Target, um, showing the whole process of how she built her studio. It was so much more exciting for her when she finally opened her doors because her followers had seen how hard she worked, all the little eye for detail she had had. Um, and it told a story of how she was a hairdresser who always aspired to own her own spa and it allowed people to share in that. And I think it was really powerful to watch somebody's dream like literally unfold on Instagram. So I think that is an amazing tool, documenting your journey and knowing that it's never too soon to start. You guys who follow me know I started out with literally just a little iPhone, going to SD school, recording myself in the car, showing what I could of my facials, um, and somehow that resonated. So I think that is a really important key to growing a business from the ground up, documenting the journey. Having a professional page. I get asked all the time, should I have a business page? and my personal page? Can I just combine it into one? For me, I think the answer is they should be separate. I don't think people, the same people who want to watch you getting tipsy with your friends on a Friday night are the same people who are going to engage and be paying clients at your salon um, and want to consume your content for education. There might be a little bit of overlap, but I think they're really very different audiences and I think it looks way more professional when you can separate the personal from, from the professional. I know the lines get a little muddled these days as the term like lifestyle blogger kind of comes into play, but for somebody who's like a spa owner, um, or starting off a lash brand, whatever it may be, I really think they should be separate and you should have your contact info and your booking system in that Instagram bio. There's so many estheticians pages I see where their professional page doesn't clearly identify what they do and it doesn't give clients the opportunity to call them or book with them. So that is something I've recently learned and I think it's really important to separate yourself with a professional page. The last thing I want to talk about is having kind of like a two-way street between yourself and the business you work for if you work for someone else like myself. So lucky I've had a very supportive boss and somebody who appreciates my social media presence. It could totally go the other way. I think in today's age, it really is an advantage for both parties. And I think it's something where you both give back to each other and support each other. Like I always love to shout out Derma Plus and create content for Derma Plus. In turn, Derma Plus reposts me, gave me the opportunity to write blog content. Tuesday with Tess on Instagram is a day where I write a little blog post about a topic of choice and I'm always happy to promote the social media in whatever way I can because it again brings value and it's not just like a follow for follow kind of thing it's using both platforms um, to give each other credibility if that makes sense so I think the spas that can kind of elevate their estheticians I think 
are at a real advantage. And it was the same thing when I worked for magazines and news outlets. The publications who realized it was smart to promote their writers and people on staff instead of having like a, a scarcity mindset and having the mindset that they were afraid to give their employees any leverage because they could possibly just leave and go use the platform for themselves. I think that's not the way to go if you can use, figure out how to um, retweet and support each other, reshare different posts, then you're both giving each other the opportunity to grow exponentially. And it's a win-win for everyone. Also, I just think good merit in the end always wins and pays off. So um, not having that scarcity mindset and the same thing goes for other estheticians, not viewing them as competition, but instead an opportunity to connect, support each other, reshare, so on and so forth. Very important for small businesses, especially. Alrighty guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment something you learned or what you liked below. As always, feel free to leave an idea for a future video that would help you out in the comments below and don't forget to enter my giveaway. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.